Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I want to talk about the difference between deen and fiqah, and uh, also deen and mazhab. Fiqah and mazhab are similar. Uh, the fiqah, and particularly mazhab. Fiqah means deep understanding. Fiqh means deep understanding. So this. Uh, the Prophet said, whoever Allah wants good for, he gives him deep understanding of the deen. This can be in many different perspectives of the deen. Something new in the deen that no one understood. Or deep understanding in Islamic law or in Islamic, uh, Islamic economics. Or deep understanding where he can appreciate the deen and love Allah for uh, realizing the truth about something. So, uh, fiqh, when I say fiqh, I specifically mean like fiqh al-Hanafi or fiqh of Imam Malik or uh, Imam Shafi'i. And the word mazhab is the same as fiqh as far as uh, the legal interpretation of Islam is concerned. So fiqh in, and mazhab, and particularly mazhab, uh, even though fiqh is more... Uh, it's more open, it's more comprehensive. Uh, fiqah is more comprehensive, but mazhab and fiqah both relate to their legal understanding of Islam. You have the Quranic text, you have the text of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which of the ayat, what is the hukum, what is the level of the hukum, uh, the hadith, what is the hukum, what is the pro prohibition, what is the command, how, what is the level of the command? Is it going to make it a farida? Is it going to make it an encouragement? Is, it, is this a sunnah? And how is it a sunnah? Uh, why is it... Uh, what, what is the minimum of the sunnah? Um, how did the sahaba take that sunnah? So on and so forth. So the legal interpretation of Islam is the fiqah. Deen is the entire system of Islam, deen al haq not just the rules and regulations of the court system, because fiqah has to do with the court system. And the ulama of Islam, the legal ulama, the ulama of Islamic jurisprudence are basically lawyers. They are judges and lawyers. They know the law. And uh, because we live in a time where Islam is not fully practiced, so we only see the legal issues mostly around ibadat, worshipping. But actually, the, uh, the, in a court system, in a proper court system where Islam is established, you would see a lot more questions regarding uh, uh, about uh, all the things that are in the outside world, not just ibadat. In economics, in politics, in, in, in society, social issues, uh, maybe many mar marriage issues, uh, economic issues, so on and so forth. Uh, so, uh, rela relational issues, uh, business issues, uh, issues that have never been raised before would go to the Islamic court, and in the Islamic court, the ulama, they would uh, try to solve these issues. So, fiqah has to do with a particular, uh, a mazhab has to do with a particular understanding of Islamic law, whether it is mazhab of Imam Hanifa or Imam Shafi'i, Fiqah is the understanding of Islamic law in general. And uh, again, Fiqah of Imam Abu Hanifa could be spe specified, but Fiqah is generally the legal understanding of the command and prohibition given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or what is also known as Sharia. But except the difference is that Fiqah and Mazhab are man-made. Sharia is not man-made. Shara'a lakum min ad Sharia is the word that is used for Islamic law, but Sharia is what is interpreted. Sharia is what is given by Allah, and then we give our interpretation. This is why if you open up any of the classical books, you will see that after every uh, fatwa, what is the word that comes there? Allah Alam. After every shar of hadith, Allah Alam. After every tafsir of ayah, Allah Alam. You will find this in the classical books because ultimately we all accept we don't know fully really about almost uh, anything. Only Allah knows everything perfectly. So 
The deen, however, is the, not just the legal system of Islam, not just the jurisprudence of Islam, but it is the, the, not just the laws, whether they're economic or political laws, the social laws, laws, all laws are fiqa, as I said, or they relate to the sharia. But deen also includes the theology, the kalam, the ilmul kalam, the theology, the creed, what, who is a Muslim? Uh, what is the nature of the, uh, the malaika, the, the nature of the descendants of the book, the, the book of Allah? It's preservation. The deen is the entire civilizational, cultural aspect of Islam. So deen al-Islam, the deen of Islam is the entire system of Islam, the entire uh, moral system of Islam, which includes the legal aspect. It also includes the cultural, civilizational aspect, also includes the theological aspect. It also includes the, the cultural aspects that may be there at that time. Also includes the ideological aspects, uh, the movement-related aspects, the da'wah-related aspects, the even the, uh, the aspects that relate to ideology and its jihad, the iman and its jihad. So iman and jihad are part of the deen. So, uh, so there are many fiqhs, many different understandings of sharia. But there's only one deen. And you enter into Islam by entering into the deen. There is no requirement to enter into a fiqh. There is a requirement to enter into deen. Deen is one, fiqh are many. And fiqh is a exercise of the scholars of Islam who have the legal knowledge of what makes something prohibited, uh, prohibited and what makes something a command and the is all the issues that go around that. What is an encouragement? What is halal? What is ja'iz? Why is it ja'iz? Why is it halal? Why is it haram? What are the rules of haram? All of these legal issues is mostly and issues for the scholarly uh, people. <clears throat> and uh, so, like I said, entering into Islam is by saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, or Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa Ashhadu anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasuluh, is by the iman aspect or ikrarun bil lisan aspect. And then you, when you enter, you have to pray, you have to fast. You have to do different things. So whoever the ulama are around you, they're going to teach you a certain version of Islam that is as close to the Prophet ﷺ as any other of the different versions. And we can talk about that one day. So the straight path is very wide. Okay, uh, The straight path is very wide. It will have all sorts of people in it from all different fiqhs. And, uh, and people that are Hanafi, are going to go to Jannah, people that are Shafi will go to Jannah, people that are uh, following even out of these four, or people that are following Imam Ibn they will go to Jannah, the Ahlul Hadith, or the, the Salafi brothers, they will go to Jannah, and uh, the Shia, those people that are within certain boundaries of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they will also go to Jannah, so for example, if a Shia says, I believe uh, Allah is, there is one Allah and the Quran is as it is, it is correct, it is preserved. And if a Shia says Muhammad sallallahu is the last messenger of Allah, but I preferred that Abu Bakr would have not been the Khalifa and Ali would have been the Khalifa. Well, this is an ijtihadi issue that somebody has, even if it's wrong, it takes him out of the circle of um, the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah for sure. But uh, it does not take him out of Islam because he still believes in Allah and his messenger. And uh, <clears throat> so the straight path is very wide. And you know the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, they disagreed on legal issues amongst each other. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud, the, the four big ones, you know, uh, Ibn Abdullah, Ibn Mas'ud, you know, Ibn Abbas, and then uh, Abdullah bin Zubayr, for example. All, these are four of the big ones amongst the, uh, the Akabirin of, amongst, at the time of the Tabi'in. So they disagreed with each other, uh, but they are one people. They are in one deen. They have one creed, and the establishment of that one creed, uh, you can call it iqamat al-deen, you can call it khilafah. And today, it is doing betterment for Islam and for the ummah, and to organize the ummah, to help the ummah reach its dream 
for the establishment of Islam. So, uh, an overemphasis on fiqhi issues, that you have to pray this way, or you have to do this way, and doing it to the point where it's dividing the ummah, you can have a certain opinion, you can feel strong about a certain opinion, but if the goal is to promote a certain version of Islam, versus the goal is and the intention is to help the ummah revive itself, help the ummah grow, help the ummah become practically established, to bring an Islamic society, not of, because the Islamic society will not be of uh, one fiqa. The Islamic society will have all the different fiqas. So you have to have, if you're going to lead the Muslims, or if anyone's going to lead the Muslims, he has to have a mindset, a heart, that is able to absorb in opinions and to move with opinions that he does not like or does not agree with. And this is true for the leadership of the mosques, for any leadership of any Muslim organization. You're not going to get people of one opinion. The Sahaba didn't have one opinion. But they moved together as a, a single force, as a single entity. And uh, so this is very important. And uh, I will be discussing similar issues. Like, for example, how do we deal with our different opinions in the Khilafah? When there is a court system, I will be talking about this also. Inshallah, jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.